All right, hey guys, Justin here, and we finally have a new video now that we have uh, finished our plumbing rough-in. So today's video is all about plumbing rough-in since it's pretty much done. So as you can see, I'm standing in the future shower, and almost all the plumbing was in service to making this shower awesome. Now, over here, we've got two different shower valves. I'm standing in what we consider the primary shower position. So this is my trusty pointing device, you can see in the primary position, there are three potential shower heads you can use. This one is kind of your standard height. It's going to be right here, points at you, but it's going to be a special shower head that could optionally emit some sort of uh, nice scent. So imagine it's like being in an ultimate spa. Maybe it's eucalyptus, maybe like some citrus scents, whatever. Uh, you just put some little stuff in the shower head and it makes it a cool experience. Up here is where there's going to be a drop arm coming down to a rain head. It comes down about two feet. So about right here is going to be a rain head. And that's going to be the one to use mostly. Over here, there's a connection for a wand. So there's going to be a hand wand coming here. You can clean yourself however you like to do with that one. Okay, so this valve turns on one, two, or all three of those in any combination you want. And this other valve is in case it's a dual person shower situation. So this valve will operate just a single rain head over here. So you can see there's another connection. There's gonna be another drop arm. So there's a second rain head over here if you're the other person showering. Okay, so that's a pretty awesome shower. How are we gonna make it work with all that water? Let's go over here to the mechanical room and I'll show you. Okay, so here's the shower door. I was just inside there. Before we go in the mechanical room, actually, let's talk about the dual water heater strategy. So you can see this big tank over here is a hybrid electric, I suppose it's called. Anyway, it's a heat pump water heater. So what it does is it takes heat from the ambient air. There's a fan you can see over here. So it sucks air down through the top of it and it goes across a radiator sucks the heat out of it and it spits out the cold air over here and that heat gets put into the water which is this 80 gallon tank below it. So for example let's say it's summertime and it's hot inside you want to cool your house down rather than taking all that heat and moving it outside through the AC system you can just take the heat and move it into the water. So it's a pretty efficient way to go. In the winter it's not as efficient because you're trying to heat your house but half the time of the year you're trying to cool your house so it makes a lot of sense and it's a um, you know, environmentally friendly way to have an ultimate hot water setup when you have such an amazing shower. Okay, so that's hot water tank number one, but because it is this heat pump system, it doesn't heat up water as quickly. And if you have an ultimate shower, you may want to not stop the shower awesomeness because you're running low on hot water. And that's where this second water heater comes in, which is this tankless unit up here. So this particular unit is fired by propane, and so that allows it to heat up a lot of water really quickly. It's called a tankless water heater, and it's tankless because when you're using propane, you can heat the water up as you're using it. So depending on the incoming water temperature, uh, if we were going off of just this unit, it can run about six or seven gallons per minute which is close to what the shower would do if you were having a bunch of shower heads going at the same time. So we got the tankless that will only heat up the water however much is needed. So imagine over here, you got your tank. It started out 140 degrees. You've been in the shower for a while because it's so amazing. And it's starting to get cool enough to where the shower is not amazing. Maybe the outgoing water temperature is trending down to maybe like 100 degrees or something like that. Um, if you're sharing, that's not hot enough, and so you're going to want it hotter. Well, what the tankless will do is it will only use enough gas to heat it up the last couple of degrees that it needs to be in order to maintain the shower temperature. But if this one keeps getting lower and lower, as we've all experienced in the shower where the tank's running out, then uh, if you completely drained it out, then this would just be using its full uh, heating capacity, which is at six or seven gallons per minute that I described. Okay, let's get in here for a closer look and talk about how we made all this work with the water heaters. Okay, so before we talk about how we made it work with the two water heaters, as you can see, there's a lot of lines in here. So let's walk through how it works before we go into all that detail. First of all, starting with the cold water, it's eventually gonna pop through this conduit from underground. We haven't done that yet. It's gonna come up here 
this is the pressure test since we got it under air test, making sure we don't have any leaks. So far, so good. So it's going to pop up through here. This is a whole house shutoff valve. So right, so if you can shut it off, you can shut off the whole water. Otherwise, it keeps going through here to this T. Comes out this side, which goes to the future sprinkler systems, not installed yet by the uh, sprinkler system guy. Otherwise, it makes this way through the T over here, and it is the domestic water supply for everything. So this is a one inch PEX line, comes into this uh, water filter. We're gonna put a carbon filter in here. So even though we've got the ultimate filter system as you saw in the pump house video, we may from time to time have to draw water from a different source. And we didn't want point of use water conditioners, so we just thought, well, we'll put a single whole house system. You can drink super tasty water from any tap, no trouble. Okay, it comes out of here, it's still cold comes over to this T and from here it's got to decide to be either hot water or cold water. So let's stick with the cold water scenario. We'll come back to hot water later. So cold water coming up this way, still in the blue one inch PEX. This is a pressure gauge so that if we're having trouble, we can see if there's not enough pressure or something like that. This is a check valve so that if we're going to take the filter out of here, it doesn't drain the whole house down. So check valve coming out. This is a half inch line going over here to the washing machine box. So the washer is going to be just on the other side of this wall. So we decided we'll just have the rough in box over here. That way it's easier to use and connect. So we've got the cold water connection for that. Otherwise, the cold water keeps going up through here. Uh, may tea and go to this uh, mixing valve. We'll come back to that. Otherwise, it keeps going up, makes a tea over this way, comes back down over to those uh, cold supply on the two shower valves that we were just discussing in there. Otherwise, it, as you can see back up here, keeps going through the ceiling and comes across this way and down through this T, comes down through here, gets reduced to three quarters so that we can use a three quarter half inch split. And this is going to go to one of the bathroom vanities. Otherwise it keeps going through here, another bathroom vanity, and then this final drop off is for a uh, built-in coffee machine that's gonna be in the kitchen on the other side of this wall. Okay, so this is all the bathroom related stuff. Cold water keeps going. Let's go around over here into the kitchen and we can see where it's going. So down around this way, it's coming across the ceiling, comes down through this wall, makes a turn over here and then it gets reduced to three quarter again so that we can use this cool manifold, which allows us to reduce the number of fittings. So this is a three quarter coming in, half, half, half coming out. Now you may be wondering, hey, wait a minute. It looks like there's gonna be two faucets over here at the kitchen sink. Well, as you may have noticed when I was talking about the shower, we're a little bit special. We like things to be really awesome. So there's gonna be a super big 44 inch sink through here. If you have two chefs and a 44 inch sink, why not have two faucets? Nobody's ever done it before, but we're gonna do it. So there'll be two Delta Touch 2.0 faucets here. I suppose we'll show you someday when the house is done. Anyway, that's why there's two cold rough-ins and two hot rough-ins and one more hot rough-in for the dishwasher. Otherwise, the cold line keeps going this way around through this wall. And you can see it kind of drops off here. This particular valve is going to be for future soda machine. Nobody has a soda machine at their house except for us because we like things to be cool. One more over here. The final run of the cold water is for the fridge, freezer, uh, ice, and cold water drinking. Okay, that's it for cold water. Let's go back to the mechanical room and talk about hot water. Okay, we're back. Now, let's pretend, remember we were here, we were starting out cold water. We we're going up the rest of the house, but I said you may be hot water if you're going to come this way. So let's say you come down here, your hot water, this is an expansion tank. You're supposed to have it when you have a hot water tank. So you got the hot water tank. It's going to sit about where I'm standing. This is a flexible connector. And so you can shut it off if you need to take the tank out. Otherwise, the hot water starts cold about where my feet are. Who's that? And then the hot water comes up here towards the top of the tank and it's gonna get into this particular shutoff valve and it feeds into here. So you can see from here it tees and it goes down to the same washer setup. Otherwise it comes up here and there's two possible directions it will go depending on the status of our three-way valves. So let's assume for the initial scenario that both water heaters are working fine 
and we want the ultimate efficiency setup, so forth. So in that case, I already mentioned hot water in the tank comes through here. Then it's going to go this way. It's going to go straight through this valve and make its way up to the top of the tankless, go into the tankless, get warmed up if needed. Otherwise, it'll just pass straight through and come down through this one. And it's going to come down through here. And this valve will allow it to primarily go this way. And it's going to go into this mixing valve that you're required to have because of code, like I said, making sure the water's not more than 120 degrees. So it's a mix of cold and hot, depending on its temperature. And it comes up through here, and then it makes its way through the rest of the run like we just went through it. So it's going to tee, go to the shower, otherwise go to the ceiling, go back to all those same fixtures that we just described. Okay, that was the scenario of both tanks working. But if you have two water heaters, you may be interested in having them be redundant for each other. So let's say the tank water heater is broken or something, or it's not here, as it is right now. How would that work? Well, you would change this valve, and then, well, okay, first of all, these valves would be closed, which they are, because there's no tank here and it's holding air pressure. So you would close these two valves, take your tank out, go fix it or whatever. While you're waiting, you still have your hot water because the cold water will come through here. It'll go up through this three-way valve, still make its way through the tankless, as we just described, come back down, follow the same route, back out through the house. But what if it's the other scenario? What if the tank water heater is working, but the tankless isn't? In that case, what we do is we leave this valve closed. This valve actually the way it is. So hot water will come through here, and this time it's going to go this way, and it's going to come around through here and then follow the same route. So these three-way valves allow it to service all possible scenarios. The water is just flowing one way or the other. I don't know if you can see it, but up at the top, there's these isolation valves. So if you had to take this unit out, you would close these two valves, and then those are unions on top, and the whole thing is removable. Okay, since we're talking about the tankless, one final thing to note is this gas line. So you may have noticed this yellow line sticking out here. Basically, on the other side of this wall, down here is going to be the regulator on the outside. It comes through this stainless steel pipe and comes up and it has this flexible appliance connector, goes into this gas sediment trap and it has a shutoff valve. So if you gotta take this out, you close this valve, which it's closed right now, and then you can shut the gas off that way. Okay, I think that about covers it for how the hot water system works, but you may have more questions about the plumbing rough-in details. Let's talk about that next. Okay, what did we use for plumbing? Well, I mentioned this is PEX. It's one inch, is this blue one. And the primary system, or wherever possible, we tried to use the Upanor Pro PEX system. So it's pretty simple. Basically, this is a, you know, it's, it's PEX pipe. This is a little ring that goes on it. So the way it works is you take a special tool, and you insert it into it, and it expands it out. The number of times depends on the size of the pipe and so forth. But basically, you just expand it, and then you put the fitting in, and then when the PEX returns to its original shape, it makes a seal around the fitting. So this is where we use it as much as possible, but you'll notice we have a different style, which are the shark bite type fittings. So there's more things available with a shark bite connection than with a ProPEX connection. So these ones, for example, this temperature gauge and this check valve, they're shark bite. If you haven't seen them before, they're even easier than that. All you do is shove the pipe in, but they tend to be more expensive. So ideally, we use the, the uh, plastic-based ProPEX fittings because it's a little cheaper, and then we use shark bite wherever we had to. Uh, so that's about it for the fittings themselves. Personally, I avoid threaded fittings like the plague because probably two times out of ten, they have some sort of manufacturing imperfection and they don't make a very good seal. So I hate threaded fittings. I don't use them unless I have to, but those other ones uh, work really well pretty much every time. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the kind of roughing work was mostly a matter of finding the right supports for things as well. So for example, you can see there's this plastic uh, little gadget here. It screws into the wall and then it just kind of clamps around the pecs and uh, squeezes it tight. So you kind of shove it in there and then this thing just grabs it. Um, but so we have a few of those up and down here, but it makes for a really solid setup. 
So we have a few of those. Uh, you may have noticed over here in the vanity, the other type of brackets we've been using are this one, for example, it's just um, kind of fits between either the studs or, or the uh, trusses. So anywhere between 16 to 24 inches. It has these cool little brackets. You just screw it to it wherever the pipe wants to go. And then it kind of clamps with this other part, uh, just clamps over top of it and holds it nice and sturdy as well. Uh, a couple other details, you can see there's these little grommets. So you drill a hole through the stud, but you don't want your pipe getting rubbed on the wood or something. So you take this little grommet and you, it just fits around the pipe and you stuff it in the hole and screw it. And that kind of holds the pipes nice and steady around those. There's also these brackets down here, which uh, is, is this hold right bracket. It is not my favorite because it's a little bit difficult to use to actually get the pipe through this part of it here. Um, but it's the same idea. You can kind of put it wherever it needs to go between two studs. And then it just has the right bend radius for putting the pegs through here and, um, and, and kind of holding it in the right position. We used a few of these bend supports. So PEX is allowed to be bent as long as you don't over bend its radius. So this little plastic part allows you to just kind of put it through there. So rather than putting a 90 with two fittings on each side, this just allows it to bend and um, get the water where it's going. Um, let's see. Well, since we're here, one more thing about fittings is this uh, drain line. So you can see for the vanity sink, there's two spots that it drains out of. So it's going to go into this drain line. This uh, makes its way down through the slab. So if you saw the video of the main line plumbing through the slab, it's going to go down through here and make its way out that way to the septic field. This part's going up because it's a vent. So it goes and connects over to the rest of the venting and the ceiling and ultimately makes its way out through the top of the wall over here. So that was all the vent pipe. But speaking of drains, let's go back to the mechanical room and show you the last bit of this video. We need the light since it's getting dark. So back here in the corner, if you can see it, is this beautiful drain tree setup. So why is it so awesome? Why can't you just have a drain line like a normal person? Well, because there's two possible ways the drain water could go. This one is a trap that ultimately connects to that same main line underground drain going towards the septic. Coming out of the top of it is a vent. On this side is it just goes straight out actually the other way and that's for the laundry to landscape uh, water drainage. So in our county, we're allowed to drain laundry water directly to the outside. You could save it and use it for irrigation or something or just let it evaporate. It doesn't have to go to the septic system, which is nice. So this particular valve can be switched back and forth. So all the drain water in this area can either go this way, out through the P-trap, down to the uh, just straight outside. Otherwise, you switch this valve over and then it goes and drains this way. Uh, out to the septic system. Coming out of the top of this valve is basically the branches of the tree. So one arm of, it, arm of it is going to connect over here to the laundry box, as we were talking about. And all these other little fittings are because there's lots of other, essentially condensate that we need to pick up. So there is this line back here, which is the condensate lines from all the HVAC systems. This water heater and the other water heater both produce condensate, so they'll go into one of these holes. And there's also a couple other things like the overpressure valves and the uh, there's one more drain that will be a part of the part of the um, sprinkler system as well. Okay, as you can see, I am not sure what I'm talking about anymore because it's been a long video. I think that about wraps it up. The bottom line is plumbing's done. We still got some electrical we're working on, so stay tuned for more next time.